Hello and welcome to Jam Hammer. In this video, we're going to be going through all the steps to paint up a unit of Deathwing Terminators. As you can see, these models have already been assembled, based and primed. So you can find a video here, I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to this, where we've previously uh, gone through a breakdown of all the steps necessary to get all your miniatures to the stage ready for painting. So I based these miniatures before the priming stage. So that was just to get a layer of prime over the base materials there um, with the hope that that would keep everything in place, stop any of that uh, terrain from falling off. So we're going to start today by painting a base coat layer of off-white. Um, so you could use an off-white colour or a sort of specific bone coloured paint here. So um, if you've been following along with these videos, I'm using this uh, Vallejo starter set, which is a really great range of beginner-friendly paints. And one of the ones that comes in that selection is a bespoke bone colour. So I'm going to be thinning that down nicely and I'm just going to start apply a thin layer. So what I'll do is I'll leave an affiliate link to this really great value paint set as well as all of the equipment that I'm going to be using in this video uh, in the description below. So if you don't have this colour, you can always just add a little bit of brown paint if you have that to a white and that should generate a really nice off-white colour that should be suitable for these Deathwing Terminators. Also, if you have a paint gun or a can of a bone coloured spray, uh, you could use that as well by all means, and it's going to save you a lot of time and it'll also give you a really nice, great, smooth finish. I'd also recommend, if you have one, a big soft brush, because that would make this stage go a lot quicker, but unfortunately, I don't have one. So we don't need to be too careful here, just need to throw that paint on. This is only the first base coat, so we just want to get that over all the parts of the Deathwing armour. And if it goes anywhere else, it's a very early stage, we can always touch this up and we're going to cover it up with another paint later anyway. As we're applying this very light colour over a coat of grey prime, you can see here that some of the grey paint, uh, some of that grey primer, is still showing through. So try to resist the temptation to cut corners here and just try not to just apply one thick coat of paint. It's much better if you can just thin your paint down nicely and then apply two thin coats to the miniature. And what that's going to do is make sure that all that fine detail of the miniature isn't obscured and clogged up with paint. So after applying a second coat, we can see that the colour is much more opaque and there's a lot less of that grey prime showing through. <laughs> okay, that was close. So I almost just took a swig of uh, old paint water. So uh, note to self, try to refrain from beige drinks at this stage of painting. That, uh, that is not my iced coffee. <laughs> Uh, now we're going to move on to blocking out the uh, bases with the black paint here. Uh, so feel free to paint the base whatever colour you want. Uh, I'm going for a black base and then I'm going to do a sort of light overpaint of grey later, just so it fits in with the colour scheme of the miniatures that I painted previously, the, uh, the tactical marines from the, uh, the same Dark Angels army. So try to be a little bit more careful here, just because we're using a much darker colour and it's going to be a bit trickier to paint over this with a light colour like this, uh, the bone colour we've used for the armour. But, you know, we all make mistakes much like this, so don't fret, we can still tie this up later with a little bit more of that base coat of off-white. So while we have some black paint on our palette, we're going to go and block out the other black bits on the miniature, such as for the, uh, the backs of the knees, where we've got some of the exposed rubber joints there, as well as a base coat of any of the areas that we want to be metallic. Uh, that's just because if you apply a metallic colour over a black, it just looks much better in the final result. So any metal parts that are going to be silvery, like the targeting systems here, storm bolters, uh, chain fist, this assault cannon, and the sergeant's sword, as well as these sort of decorative parts on the mini. 
the winged emblem on the assault gunner here, as well as the wings on the back of the sergeants. I'm going to paint and leave those black, just to add a little bit of variety to the models, but then also to tie them into their bike riding brothers, the Ravenwing. Now take a grey paint, or you can just mix a bit of black into your white paint if you have that, and just get that to a nice shade that you want, and then we're going to pick out any of the grey bits on the mini. So I'm going to paint these Terminator Honours in this grey, so they stand out from the rest of that white miniature, and hopefully they'll sort of look like they're chiselled from granite or something else that's quite ornate like that. And since this miniature is so predominantly hued with this bone colour, I'm going to paint the battle honours with this grey too. Otherwise, I'm a bit um, hesitant that if we, if we go with the usual sort of um, off-white colour to connote paper, I'm a bit concerned that it's just going to disappear into the armour. And these guys have a lot of battle honours. Hopefully, they're not overcompensating for something like, I don't know, betraying the Emperor? We're going to paint these skull emblems with the same grey so they match the Terminator on us and this emblem on the back of the chain fist. So these are some great miniatures for someone like myself who hasn't painted in a while as they've got a lot of these sort of embossed features and you can just quite easily just drag the paint over them and catch the, the raised detail there. I'm also going to overpaint the bases, so using a little less paint on the brush than usual, I'm just going to gently apply this over the rocks on the base so that it's mostly grey, but a little bit of that black undercoat still shows through and just adds a little bit of depth there. So again, we don't need to be too neat here as we're going to go over any slip-ups like this one later on with a little bit more black paint. Now if you get your red paint ready, we're just going to pick out a few parts of the mini here, namely the weapons and the centre of the battle honours. So starting with the storm bolters, just apply a nice thin coat over the casing of the storm bolter. So these weapons um, are quite large, so some of that grey prime again might show through after this coat. So same as that base layer, we want to put on one thin layer of the red and then we can always go back and apply another coat as needed. Now to paint the rosettes of those battle honours. And it might be a little better to get a thinner brush here if you have one. Uh, or if you can use the brush that you're using as long as it comes to a nice point, nicer than this, and carefully paint those eyes red too. Damn. Yeah, definitely, definitely get yourself a thinner point than that. <sighs> the damn coffee from earlier has come back to haunt me. No worries though. Let's pop a little bit of red in that targeting module lens too and we can always go back over the Terminator's face again and we'll cover up that slip up later. So these units um, have a sort of symbol on the opposite arm from the Terminator on us too. So just to keep these in keeping with the tactical marines from earlier, we're going to paint those red too. I'm also going to pick out this sort of decorative rope on the mini in red, just so it stands out against that classic white armour. So just going to gently apply red over the rope. There's a few missed strokes here and there, but again, this isn't anything that we can't cover up later. So usually a cloth like this here is something that I'd also tend to paint in that off-white colour. So I don't want to get that lost against the armour too, and I want to see a little bit of variety again, so I'm going to use a dark green. I think that fluff-wise, this is going to be quite good as well because, again, it's going to keep in with the theme of these being part of this larger Dark Angels force that we're painting. So I'm going to pick out the cloth on the sergeant with the same nice dark green paint that you'd apply for like a Dark Angels armour. So as well as the cloth of the sergeant, I'm going to apply this same dark green to the Aquila on all the Terminators. Now, uh, again, not practicing what I preach here, but uh, I actually forgot to base coat the metallics with black, so I'm starting to apply the gun metal here straight onto the grey prime. It still looks fine if you're doing the same, um, but especially if you want to create a little bit of the shadow afterwards, what we're going to do is apply a black wash later and that'll settle into those recesses and give that a little bit more depth. So I want to go over all of the minis and pick out anything metal with this gunmetal paint. 
So for these terminators, that means chain fists. And I'm going to pick out these pipes and cables with this color too. And we also need to get this assault cannon looking suitably metallic. So a little bit more on this mini. And I want these grills on the bottom of their helmets to stand out a bit too. So I'm going to apply a little bit more gunmetal there. But this would, I think, also look fine, just staying in the in the off-white colour for the rest of the armour. You see, I'm, I'm going to paint the backs of the knees with a gunmetal too, but I think in hindsight, maybe a grey overpaint would be better here, just to suggest that this is rubber tubing rather than metal peeking through. So these being some of the Imperium's finest and obviously most loyal soldiers, there are quite a few decorative pieces and emblems on the miniatures. For these I'm going to apply a bit of ostentatious gold. So for the assault gunner here, we've got an Aquila, this array of like dangling daggers, a large belt buckle looking thing, and a little shield up here on the shoulder. I'm just going to paint this boss here with gold. The sergeant also has a lot of these decorations, most of which are skulls. These are the good guys, right? So I don't want to paint these the same bone colour as the armour, so these are going to be gold too. We've got a sensor here too, which all the sergeants in this box seem to have. I guess they want to spread a commandly aroma of incense wherever they go in the 41st millennium. I'm also going to engolden the emblem on his head and the metallic parts of the sword hilt so that he's looking very fancy indeed. These Terminators don't seem to take the name of Deathwing lightly and they have more than a few feathers dotted about on their armour. So for these, we're just going to get out a regular white paint and pick them out. So again, this is quite a light colour here, so this might need a couple of thin coats too. But that is thankfully about it for the white parts of the mini. Now that we've applied the main colours, it'd be a good time to just do a quick check of all the miniatures, check them all over and tidy up any of the mistakes that you may have made, or just to get any of the parts that you may have forgot in that first go through. So for myself, I didn't see this rope down here on this termi, so I'm just going to give that a touch of red so that it matches the rest. And I also slipped up on this one's armour, so I'm just going to apply a little bit more of that bone colour just to patch that up. And there we go, all the painting is done. Now these still look a little bit stark, and those colours are a bit too light too for the, the, the grim dark future. So I'm going to move on now to a wash stage. So we'll start with a brown wash, uh, I'm using the Army Painter series here. Uh, again, I'll leave a link down to those below if you'd like to use them, but any brown wash would be fine. I'm just going to apply this all over just to tone down that really bright armour. So just being very generous here, daub that brown wash all over the mini. So you want to keep this moving around, you want to encourage it into those recesses to settle in there, create that shadow. We don't really want this wash to settle on any of the large flat pieces of armour, and there are a lot of them. Um, because if it dries there, it's going to leave tide marks. So I just want to keep make sure that moves around and push it into those recesses. So if we compare this miniature to one of the Terminators that's not being washed yet, we can see this is really bringing out a lot of shadow that's missing from the miniature before, and adding some great depth. So most of the mini wants a coat of brown wash, but you also want to apply a little bit of black wash to any of those metallic parts. So uh, maybe the clips on the storm bolter, those cables at the back of the arms, as well as the greys on the terminator honors and the battle honors. Again, if we compare this miniature that's had the black wash applied on the right to one that's just had the brown wash on the left, you can see that black wash has settled into the grooves, created that shadow that was lacking before. It's also toned down some of that brightness and taken off a little bit of the sheen of the metal so it's not quite as lurid. So like I alluded to earlier, one of the drawbacks of using a wash is that it can also darken down the paint a little bit more than you want it. So I wanted these Deathwing Terminators to be a little bit lighter actually than ended up here with that brown wash. So you could either just apply it carefully into the recesses and not put any on the armour, or you could just give it a little bit of a light dry brush here with that original cream colour. So if we just get some paint 
deeply nestled into the brushes, bristles, wipe most of that off on a little bit of kitchen roll so there's just a little bit of paint soaked into the brush and then gently drag that all over the miniature trying to just apply it onto the armor and it should just settle on those raised points of the miniature and just add a little bit more lightness. So we can see here if we compare it to one that we've just done we can see that it's a little bit lighter. We can also apply a few more direct highlights to our minis. So if we take a little bit of yellow and add it into our red, we'll get this nice warm orange colour, which we can use to pick out a few of those red details, and again, just create a little bit more depth. So we'll just very lightly apply a little to the edges and the centre of the battle on us. We can also apply just a little thin line along the edges of the weapons, as well as the shoulder emblem here. So you just want to create this illusion of, of light hitting the miniature in these some key areas. So we don't want to apply too much of this, you know, less is more. I want to try and avoid getting this into the recesses. If you've got a steady hand, steady than mine, you can also apply just a little of this colour to the eyes and give that a little bit more life there too. So we can do the same with this warm orangey red on the rope of the Chain Fist Terminator and along the weapon too. And give some of the same attention to the assault cannon as well, just going along a few of the edges here, just where the light could be catching the gun, as well as some of those various extras that we've painted red. Just add a few little highlights here and there. If we get out our white paint again, we can ever so gently just drag this along any of those feathers that we have left black, just like these on the Chain Fist Terminator, just so it looks a little bit like the light is glinting off the edges. Again, steady hands, steady. You can add a dot of white to the eyes to finish off that shine as well, just to give that idea of a lens. Uh, and we can also do that to that shoulder aperture lens as well. If we ensure that this white is thinned out nicely on our palette, you can also add a little bit to those battle on us too, just to make them stand out. Again, want to avoid those recesses and just try to catch the raised areas and edges where light could be hitting the miniature. We'll also do the same to the feathers, which um, have admittedly gone a little bit dull after having that black wash applied to them. So just a stroke here or there. If you feel inclined to, uh, take the armor just a little bit further and add a few edge highlights just here and there with that very thinned out white. So this doesn't have to be on every edge, just a few pieces of the miniature here and there will sell the idea of light hitting the model. Uh, finally, if you have a silver paint, uh, there was one included in this Vallejo box set, you can just take some of that and pick out a few parts of the metallic uh, areas of the miniature as well to just again apply a few highlights. So avoid the recesses, just tracing a little bit of the silver along the edges or on corners where the metal may have been worn or scraped against terrain on the battlefield. You can also add a little bit of this silver paint into our original gold paint and add a few highlights to the gold areas of the miniature too. So like these uh, <clears throat> uh, good guy awards on the sergeant here, we can apply a few little silvery gold highlights just to suggest light, and also just to restore a bit of that sheen that may have been dulled down at the wash stage. And there we have it. Five Deathwing Terminators with a real varied arsenal of weapons to bring death to their hated chaos foes. So these have been some really great miniatures to paint, a lot of variety in textures, from cloth to metallics, armour to feathers. They've really given us a chance to explore creatively too, and just to create a few hints here and there to link them in with their battle brothers from the different sections of this Dark Angels force. Thank you so much for watching, I uh, really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and then ringing the bell to be notified when more videos have been released. So yeah, we'll have some more videos coming out very soon, and until then, thanks again for watching.